Wow, did you see that bass strike that jig? It left me speechless. This video is all about the jig and the various aspects of fishing with it. Let's travel together on a journey through the many aspects of fishing. Welcome to Fishing and More with Tom, and I'm Tom. Today we're on a mission to land a big bass that will make our jaws drop using jigs. Fishing for bass can be challenging, especially in tough conditions. You'll be facing obstacles like murky water and changing weather. You have to be determined to come out on top. To entice the big bass, you're going to use top-notch tactics, gear, and techniques. Stay with us as we showcase our arsenal of jigs and show you how we're strategizing to outsmart these elusive creatures. And then will come the intense moment you've been waiting for. Watch as the bass strikes the jig with incredible force, creating an adrenaline-filled scene that will keep you on the edge of your seat. What a catch! Reflecting on the excitement of this moment, you'll be thrilled to share the strategies that worked and the joy of overcoming the challenge. It's moments like these that make fishing truly unforgettable. To those of you that have been fishing with jigs for years, thank you for checking out our channel. It's hoped that in a couple minutes you won't be saying, I know all that, and change the channel. No pun intended. We would appreciate your comments expertise on the matter, and guidance for others that are just learning to fish a jig. Besides, by providing a comment or two, makes you eligible to possibly win a few of our jigs. The jigs featured in this video are available on our website. I'm the Grand Wizard of Jig Fishing and we're here to provide an insight as to what we'll be talking about in this the second part of our All About the Jig video series. Referencing your gear and techniques we should first talk about jigs. They are designed to be dropped or jerked up and down in the water to mimic the motion of injured prey. To start things off we have some topics of discussion that need to be addressed. What weight jig is the best to use? Does the mood of the fish determine the weight? Powder paint jig heads to catch more fish. What do I look for when that large fish hits? What does it feel like when a fish hits my jig? What is the best size jig to use? By experimenting with different techniques, locations, and bait options, the fishermen can increase their chances of success and hopefully reel in some nice catches with their jig. I hope later on in the video, he'll give us some proverbs on the subject. Like our video series on worm harnesses, we have a lot of information to cover. Thus, we'll do it in several videos and suggest you subscribe to our channel. That way you'll be aware of additional videos as they are produced and uploaded to YouTube. The information discussed in this series is a condensed version of our ebook called All About the Jig that is available on our website. We welcome any and all questions, suggestions, and or comments. They would be greatly appreciated. We have a couple of interesting, hopefully exciting things we'd like to share with you and we'll uh, tell you about towards the end of the video. In fact, we'll be giving away some jigs to try and catch some of those big bass. We have a lot of information to cover, so let's get started. The information for this video is a condensed version of what is contained in our All About the Jig ebook. The best jig weight to use when trying to find fish depends on several factors, including the depth of the water, the current strength, the target species, and the fishing conditions. Lighter jigs are typically used in shallower water or when fishing in slower currents. They can be effective for targeting fish in shallow flats, along shorelines, or in calm backwaters. Light jigs are also suitable for finesse fishing techniques 
and when fish are in a more tentative mood. Medium weight jigs are versatile and can be used in a wide range of fishing situations. They are effective for fishing in moderate depths, such as around structure, drop-offs, and submerged brush. Medium jigs provide a balance between casting distance and depth control. Heavy jigs are ideal for fishing in deeper water or in strong currents where you need to get your line, your lure down quickly and maintain contact with the bottom. They are commonly used when targeting deep water species or when fishing from boats in offshore environments. Some jigs are designed with interchangeable weights, uh, allowing anglers to adjust the jig weight based on fishing conditions. This versatility can be beneficial when fishing in areas with changing depths and currents. When trying to find fish, it's often a good idea to start with a medium weight jig and adjust the weight as needed based on your observations and the behavior of the fish. Experimentation and adaptation are key to finding the optimal jig weight for a particular fishing situation. Yes, the mood of the fish can influence the weight of the jig that you should be using. Fish can exhibit different behaviors and feeding habits based on factors such as water temperature, weather conditions, water clarity, and fishing pressure. When fish are actively feeding in an aggressive mood, they may be more willing to chase and strike a faster moving jig. In this case, using a lighter jig may be effective as it allows a more finesse presentation and can mimic the behavior of injured or fleeing prey. Fish that are in a neutral mood may be less responsive to fast-moving lures, but can still be enticed to strike with the right presentation. Using a medium weight jig can provide a balance between offering a natural presentation and covering water efficient. When fish are in a finicky or lethargic mood, such as during cold fronts or in heavily pressured waters, they may require a slower, more subtle presentation to trigger a strike. In these situations, using a heavier jig can help you get the lure down to the fish quickly and maintain contact with the bottom where they may be holding. It's essential to pay attention to the behavior of the fish and adapt your jig weight accordingly. If you're not getting bites with your current setup, Try adjusting the jig weight, size, color, or presentation style until you find what works best for the mood of the fish on that particular day. Matching the jig weight to the mood of the fish can increase your chances of success on the water. Experimentation and observation are key to determining the most effective jig weight for a given fishing situation. Painting a fishing jig using powder paint is a process that involves coating the jig with a powder paint and then heating it to melt and fuse it to the jig. The jig is then cooled and the process is complete. To take it a step further, you can add an eye or a bucktail. The final product will be a durable, long-lasting finish that is resistant to chipping and peeling. Selecting a color of powder paint for a fishing jig can depend on a number of factors. It includes the species of fish you are targeting, water and weather conditions, even the time of day.
starting with an unpainted round head jig. We add a piece of heat shrink tubing to cover the eye. The jig is held over a heat gun for about 10 seconds. And then briefly dipped in Junebug Green Flake Potter Paint, returning it to the heat gun momentarily. The heat shrink tubing is then removed. To complete the process, we then bake it in the toaster oven. When a fish hits a jig, there are several signs and sensations to look for that indicate a bite. The most obvious indication of a fish hitting a jig is movement or twitching of the fishing line. If you see the line suddenly tighten, twitch, or move sideways, it could be a sign that a fish has taken the bait. When a fish bites a jig, you may feel a slight tug or pressure on the line. Pay attention to any changes in line tension as it could indicate a fish has grabbed a jig. You may feel a subtle tap, bump, or thud through the fishing rod when a fish strikes the jig. Depending on the size of the fish and the intensity of the strike, this sensation can vary from gentle to more pronounced. Fishing in clear water or in shallow conditions, you may actually see the fish strike the jig. Look for flashes, swirls, or any visual disturbances near the bait that indicate a fish has taken the jig. In some cases, you may hear a fish hitting the surface or splashing as it strikes the jig. This is more common when fishing in shallow water or when the fish is particularly aggressive. Sometimes you may notice that your line is moving sideways or away from you shortly after making a cast. This could indicate a fish has taken a jig on the fall. Occasionally a fish may take the jig and swim towards you, resulting in a delayed reaction or subtle indication of a bite. Pay attention to any changes in line tension or movement, even if they occur after a few moments. If you're retrieving the jig and suddenly feel resistance or the jig stops moving, it could be a sign that a fish has grabbed the bait and is holding on to it. Sometimes anglers simply have a gut feeling that something is different or off, even if they haven't seen or felt any obvious signs of a bite. Trust your instincts and be ready to set the hook if you suspect a fish has taken the jig. It is essential to remain attentive and observant when fishing with a jig as bites can vary in intensity and presentation. By paying attention to these signs and sensations, you can increase your chances of detecting and responding to a fish strike effectively. When a fish hits a jig, you may feel various sensations through your rod and line. You may feel a sudden tug or pull on the line as the fish takes the jig. This can range from a subtle tap to a more pronounced pull depending on the size and aggression of the fish. As the fish grabs the jig and swims away with it, you may feel a slight increase in weight or resistance on the rod. This is often accompanied by a sensation of the rod tip bending or flexing under the fish's weight. Some anglers describe feeling a thump or a bump on the line as the fish strikes the jig. This can be distinct 
an unmistakable sensation that indicates a fish has taken the bait. In more subtle bites, you may feel a light tap or tick on the line as the fish mouths the jig. This can be easy to miss if you're not paying close attention, but experienced anglers learn to recognize these subtle bites. When a fish grabs the jig and holds on to it without moving, you may feel a sudden increase in resistance or dead weight on the line. This occurs when the fish is swimming towards you or holding still after taking the bait. If the fish swims sideways or makes a sudden run, you may feel the line move or twitch in response. This can be a clear indication that a fish is on the line and moving away from you. The bending or flexing of the fishing rod is another indication of a fish striking the jig. You may feel the rod tip bend sharply or the rod load up as the fish pulls against the line. Experienced anglers developed a heightened sensitivity to the slightest changes in line tension, rod movement, or vibrations. This allows them to detect even the most subtle bites and respond quickly to, with the hook set. The sensations you feel when a fish hits a jig can vary depending on factors such as the size of the fish, the fishing conditions, and your own level of experience and sensitivity. Paying close attention to these feelings and being ready to respond with the hook set can help you capitalize on every bite when jig fishing. The best jig size to use when trying to find fish can vary depending on factors such as the target species, fishing conditions, and the depth of the water. Start with a medium-sized jig that is suitable for the target species and adjust the size based on the fish's response. If you're not getting bites, try downsizing or upsizing the jig until you find what works best for you. Choose a jig size that closely matches the size of the bait fish or prey species present in the water. This can increase your chances of attracting the attention of feeding fish. In deeper water, larger jigs may be more effective for reaching the desired depth quickly and maintaining contact with the fish. In shallow water or when fish are suspended higher in the water column, smaller jigs may be more appropriate. The best jig size for finding fish is one that matches the fishing conditions and the behavior of the target species. Experimentation and adaptation are key to finding success with jig fishing, so don't be afraid to try different sizes until you find what is working best for you in a given situation. We're going to stop jigging around and just say, we hope we have provided some interesting and valuable information and would appreciate a like and a subscribe to tell us that. The jigs featured in this video are available on our website. As we wrap things up, let's recap the key tips and strategies we've covered in this ultimate guide to landing lunkers through jig fishing. Remember, patience, persistence, and a bit of finesse can make all the difference when you're out on the water chasing bass. Lastly, I want to leave you with a challenge. Why not try jig fishing for bass on your next fishing trip? Share your experiences successes, and even the ones that got away in the comments section below. Let's build a community of passionate anglers who are always up for the thrill of the catch. Meet the Grand Wizard of Fishing. He's got some proverbs for us. You can lead a fish to a jig, but you can't make it bite. It's probably a case of practicing catch and release. Hooked on fishing? Don't worry, there's no cure. 
If people concentrated on fishing like they do their smartphones, we'd have a world full of expert anglers. If wishes were fishes, we'd walk on the sea. If my wife would let me, I'd fish every day of the week. Subscribe so you'll know when part three of our series is uploaded and available for viewing. The planned topics of discussion will be, what is a casting jig? What is a flipping jig? What is a pitching jig? What is a structured jig? And what is a swim jig? I'm told we're going to have another visit from the Grand Wizard giving us some more proverbs just for the jig fishermen. Check out our other videos. We have a wealth of information that we'd like to share with you. There is much more planned. In the meantime, we'd like to hear of your experiences. We're giving away copies of our ebook. Subscribe so that you have an opportunity to get one. Once again, thank you for your visit. Hopefully the information provided will be of value and help you catch more fish. Please be respectful of water and weather. Now let's go fishing.